Hello, everyone. You're listening to the Live Your Raw Life podcast. Welcome to the platform where the intention is to help you live your rich, authentically aligned, wholesome life. I'm your host, Rachel Ann Watkins. Together, let's raise your vibration and awareness in order for you to live the raw life that was meant for you. Hello, and welcome to a brand new episode of the Live Your Raw Life podcast. Today, I have a special guest on the show. I was introduced to today's guest through a random meeting that I popped in from my business coach. And I popped into this meeting and they were talking about this upcoming book and if people wanted to be a part of it and the process and what that looked like. And I was like, how in the world did I end up in this meeting? but I kept listening and then I was intrigued and then I became more curious. And then this woman started speaking and I was like, she knows what she's talking about. Huh? So today I would love to welcome Sandra Rodriguez Bicknell. She is a best-selling author, a book coach, a mother, a model, and an acclaimed jeweler. Welcome to the show, Sandra. Hello, hello. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you for being here. You have quite the story. And I started reading your book and it is captivating. I just like, (laughs) I'm trying to find the, I'm so close to being done. I have like 20 pages left. And you know, when you get so tired and you're like, I can't do it anymore. I'm like, okay, so I'm going to finish it soon. But you went from a traveling model to an acclaimed jeweler And now today you empower healers and coaches and facilitators of various modalities to write their book. So clearly this was not a straight road for you. (laughs) Absolutely not. (laughs) Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Could you just share a little bit about your background and how it was Uh, weaving and winding and you landed here? Of course, of course. Um, you know, life is interesting. Life brings you pieces of the puzzles, I feel, through our lives. And sometimes we're doing something and we're like, this is so weird. Like, why would I have this job? I've never studied this. I never was interested in this, but here I am. And then 10 years later, you need spreadsheets. And you had to learn the spreadsheet because you had that job. And now you're using the spreadsheet because it's something that you needed. So for me, that's what life is all about is that we just don't know why these things come into our lives, but we do them. And they're part of our little treasures that we we pull out at the end. Um, And so yeah, I was 21 years old living in New York City, my parents are from Cuba. So, you know, very sheltered, always, you know, making sure that we were safe. Of course, it was New York. So they were pretty strict. And at the age of 21, I was working in the city, I was at university, and I was discovered. Someone saw some pictures of me. I was not, not in any way, shape, or I was the ugly duckling of the family. So for somebody to say, do you want to be a model? I was like, what? Five foot seven, like nothing out of the ordinary to say model. But I was like, sure. And even my father said, if I can't afford to send you around the world. That's a fact. So if you have an opportunity to do it, go for it. And so I went, I went to Paris on a direct booking, worked with the best photographers. I did every cover under the sun and I laughed the entire time. I'm like, these people are cuckoo, but anyway, let's roll with it. You know, they used to call me La Petite, the little one. That's how, yeah, that's how it was like, no, but I worked, I had an incredible career. I still have every single one of my magazines and every single one of my tear sheets and every one of my portfolios. Um, And 30 odd years later, and it was just wonderful. It was a wonderful experience. I moved to South Beach in 1990 where it was like the hub of the modeling industry. Everybody went to Miami Beach, all the Germans doing the catalogs. Everybody was on South Beach doing their, you know, the photo shoot. So I went there was working. It was great. And I was set up with my now ex-husband, but the father of my children were set up. Eight months later, I was living in Jamaica because he's from Jamaica. 
moved to Jamaica, new country, new everything, nothing I knew, like completely different. It's very English background in the way that people, you know, move, entertain, speak, the manners, all of that is very English because obviously it was English colony. Um, big family, lots of people in your life, lots of people in your business, you know, small community, 600 people at my wedding, like oh my something, gosh. yes, wild. It was wild. And then, you know, seven months later, we realized, seven months, seven years later, sorry, realized that it was just too much, too soon. I was 25, he was 27, his mom was dying. It was like a, you know, farewell for her. Well, happened. <clears throat> but, you know, we decided that we would, you know, go our separate ways. It was hard. But I stayed in Jamaica. I couldn't say, you know, I'm taking your children. I don't like you anymore. Like, that was just not an option. So we, I stayed and raised the children in Jamaica and I had a jewelry business. My family was in the jewelry business when I was growing up. My godmother was a jeweler. My uncle was a jeweler. My aunt strung pearls. It was always in my life. So when it got to the point that I was in Jamaica and the kids were born, it was like, now, you know, what am I going to do? So I started the jewelry business. It was fantastic. It was very personal. It was you know, kind of custom curated for the clientele because everybody knew each other. So I can't have two of anything because God forbid Mary and Lisa had the same necklace. So <laughs> had a wonderful, wonderful business and uh, raised my kids through that experience. And it was, it was fantastic. It was great. It was flexible. I had a business inside another store. So I was able to leave and raise them, pick them up at school. So that period of their life my children's life was really well balanced thank goodness mm -hmm. and then their dad was always fully involved in their life so it was wonderful it was wonderful and then after the jewelry business you know things changed in 2008 there was that big economic fall in Jamaica for its own reasons um, and then in the U.S. so the jewelry business had to change and evolved and moved to Miami for a few years. The kids were off at boarding school in Canada. And uh, that's when I was like, okay, now what I'm going to do, move to Miami. My father wasn't well, came to live in Miami for a few years until he passed. Um, again, when the kids were back in Jamaica, I went back to Jamaica, had one relationship after another that was showing me that it was just, you know, I was repeating patterns. Mm -hmm. I kept getting the same result. And I didn't understand what it was that I was doing. What was I seeing? What was I, you know, how I was interacting in these relationships and why, again, I had to just leave. This was not a good space for me. It had to end. It had to change. And so that last relationship um, in 2015, I just moved into our new home. I had just gutted and redecorated and recreated the entire house. I was so excited. I was like, yeah, this is it. This is my, you know, long lasting home. No more moving 2015. And I kept watching the things not going the way that I was hoping for, that I felt I deserved, you know? And I said, okay, I'm just going to watch. I'm going to watch and observe what's happening. And I spent some time away doing a lot of spiritual introspection, a lot of thinking and, and healing. Um, gave him a little time, came back, and I realized, no, I got to go. So I had, I had a little apartment, a little studio apartment that I had was paying money just to have it in case. I didn't want to get into a space that I'd have to stay. So I had this empty apartment with a bed, sheets, milk, little dog food for my dog, just in case, whatever, I'd have a place. And it happened. One day it was just... Something happened that it wasn't anything dramatic, but my feelings were hurt. I was in a space that I did not feel comfortable. And I just literally, 11.30 at night, picked up out of the bed. I threw on a dress. I grabbed my dog and we went to the apartment and they never turned back. Mm. And that was very painful. Very, very painful because I was sure this was it. Mm -hmm. I was certain. This was it. Not certain because always we always have that little voice inside saying, you know, even my children were like, you really think this is it? You know, <laughs> and they were already a little older. But anyway, 
my my subconscious wanted it to be it, I guess. And that's it. Moved to the place, to the apartment, started just shedding and, you know, learning and really healing and, you know, really deep into my ritual and really deep into my spiritual, you know, learning and, and really absorbing a lot of astrology, everything that I could get my hands on. Just, I had a coach that really supported me one-on-one. -on -one. I spent a lot of money on, you know, investing in myself. Mm -hmm. I said, this is, I can't do it on my own anymore. I need to hire someone that has the qualifications to support me through this transformation mm -hmm. because it's either now or never. I was, I was turning 50. That was it. I had to really dig deep and stop defending whether it be the circumstance, the choice or myself. Mm -hmm. And that was incredible. And then I said, okay, I have a story. I have a lot that has happened in my life and I cannot say, okay, God, thanks, but I'm not going to share it. It was, these were gifts, gems, treasures that opened my eyes. It made changes in the way I move and, and, and interact with people. I had to share it. Mm -hmm. And I, I remember telling people, I'm going to write a book. I'm going to write, I said, if I'm going to write a book, I have to start telling everybody and that way I can't turn back. So I told everybody. And there were some people that would say, why do you want to share your story? Especially, you know, the close community is like, why? Like, why are you sharing your business with people? And I said, I have to, it's my duty. If I tell my story, then I know that so many people, and if not so many, one will not feel alone through their journey, through their choices, through their experiences. So I'm doing it. I didn't have a business. I wasn't a coach. I was just a person who wanted to tell a story. And again, I looked for a professional. I wanted someone to help me. I didn't, I knew I, I wrote the first chapter and I couldn't do anymore. I just didn't know how to move along. And so I started searching for a coach and like how life is, things come and appear. Mm -hmm. And this coach appeared and I went and I hired her and again, spent a lot of money but I had the support that I needed to write my story in an impactful way without, you know, volumes. It was, you know, 111 pages, another cool story. But I have, I had my book. I was able to share my story and that's how my business evolved. That's how everything else changed for me. Once I wrote my story and I was able to witness um, and validate the story of my life. That is amazing. What an incredible journey. You know, I have my, my mother-in-law, she always looks at my husband's niece, who is very wise beyond her years. And she's like, oh, why did I have to wait until I was 50 or however old to figure all this stuff out? But it's just part of our path, you know? And so for you at 50, which is still so young, to be able to look back and recognize I have something here that is going to help others. A lot of what you shared, you just touched on little components that are more, that are described more deeply in your book. And so I highly recommend checking out the book. There'll be a link in the show notes so you can get your hands. It's called Cuts of a Diamond. And I'm only, you know, I only have 20 pages left, but it will, it is riveting. It captures you. You can picture like the house that you gutted. I can picture that in my mind. That is how well-written it is. So it's very clear that you have a gift with words and a gift with writing. And so obviously you are very well aligned in your path. <laughs> oh my God. Thank you. I'm and then, and when you said that your book has 111 pages, I got goosebumps. Could you share the significance of that a little bit? Oh, well, 111 has been showing up for me since I left home to Paris to model. And I lived in 111. My best friend's apartment was 111. Like it kept just showing up everywhere I went. And I knew, I knew, always knew that it was a number that was something, a sign uh, a, a angel, God, uh, my, the universe, just letting me know that I wasn't alone and that I was going to be okay and that everything was fine. And it comes up for me when I'm in a, in a crossroads, like making a decision. 
it will come up like it's okay, it's okay, or you're on the right path, or you're not alone. Um, so I that number has been just everything to me. And when I left for that little while in the relationship, I went to Toronto. My daughter had an apartment in Toronto because she was at University of Ryerson, Ryerson University. And she'd gone to Spain to learn Spanish. And she's like, just stay in my apartment. And I was there for a little while and I said, I'm gonna get a tattoo. I mean, again, almost 50, never had a tattoo. I'm gonna get a tattoo. So I got the 111 on my wrist here. And I had it and it really is, my son was born on the 11th. My daughter was on the 10th. It's the three of us, it's 111, it's just everything. I write my book, book gets published, my author copies arrive and I'm flipping through the pages and I'm looking at the book and I'm so excited. And the about the author page falls on page 111. When I look at that, I, I just could not believe my eyes. I went through the book to see if they tried to do it on purpose because I speak about 111. I'm like, did they try to make this? Like, come on, that's a lot of effort. 111, my picture and about the author. I have oh a body to it. That's incredible. I, it. I know, I know. I just, I can't, I can't. So that's again, God, the sign, the universe saying, yes, yes, mm -hmm. you, you did the right thing. Yeah. yeah. Oh my goodness. So I, you mentioned a little bit, you know, what's, what kind of ignited the flame in you to share your story, but for you, like I, you know, when we write our story, cause this is something I experienced writing my chapter was like, this is a story that if it helps one person, that's all that matters. So what was it for you about your story that you had, what was the intention of writing it? Like what, who did you hope to help? Who was your ideal reader? Yeah. What I want, my ideal reader was a person very similar to me that had life experiences, but I didn't want, or I, and I, I knew that it wasn't things that were happening to me, mm. you know? Things were just, this is the way life unfolds. I made decisions. I was calling in these lessons. Um, sometimes we're in service for others. So some people come into our lives and we suffer. And there really isn't a major lesson for us. We're kind of standing in the space for them to do the transformation and the growth. Because we are here to serve. It can't always be about the lesson I get through every single thing that happens. And so I wanted to tell the story from my perspective and also shining the light on everyone else. So my, my editor said, Sandra, I cannot say that anyone you wrote about, about was a bad person because it wasn't about pointing fingers or saying he did this or they did that. It was about this is life. Mm -hmm. And this is people have limitations and there's human nature and there's so many things to it in life and we have to just embrace it share it because with so many things when we keep it a secret for whatever the reason it's taboo but as soon as we start talking about it it's not such a big deal it kind of just happens and that's what i wanted to do was just break that that shame mm -hmm. and break that that you know insecurity about oh i'm less because i'm divorced or i'm less because i was left by my you know, a long time boyfriend, or I walked out because I made a decision. So it was really just to shine the light on the way life is and, and give hope and know that it's okay. It's okay. Yeah, it you is. Know? It is okay. And that was one thing that I really learned as I worked with you as the book coach for Wounds to Wisdom was it's okay to share the story because this is something that a lot of people don't talk about. My chapter was about re releasing relationships with parents. And that happens more often than I think a lot of us know, but we don't ever talk about it. And so it's like, this is, this is my story and this is what needs to be told. And when you told us the name of the book in that meeting, I was like, yes, 
this is where my story is to be told. But you don't always know exactly what story for sure. And so that was something you really did an amazing job of guiding us through. You were like, what story are you most fearful to share? That's the one. And it is. And I could totally see, you know, and I remember when I table did at my table read, I was like, okay, I want to make sure that it comes across that there is love and I'm not pointing blame, like what you were just saying, there's no blame on the other people. And that's a hard line to walk because when we step out of that victimhood and we step into empowerment, wow, what a radical shift, but it is, it's a line and you got to stay on it. (laughs) Absolutely. Absolutely. And if you're mindful of your words, and this is something I live by, be mindful of the, you could say one thing so many different ways, just by the words you choose. But the words that you choose that makes the point without having to, you don't even have to say much. You don't have to say much. You could say that circumstance that happened when I was 15, that changed me forever. I mean, honestly, that's impactful. you captured so much without saying so many words but still make the point you know yes and that's what was important is that you share your story and I I remember hearing you telling and it was like wow the love the respect Mm. that no matter what was happening through your story you still held that very very high and made it very very clear this is where you're coming from really beautiful and it was really yes. thank you for that reflection because right back at you that's what I see and what I'm hearing as I'm reading your book as well it was like this just it wasn't working and there was you know I'm like I'm this doesn't fit fit my life it doesn't fit who I am and you're a great person and I love you but it's time to move on and so it's the yeah. same thing so thank you for that So I'm so curious, this is something I don't know about you, but what was the catalyst for you to remember your mission during this lifetime and stepping into your purpose of becoming a book coach? So how did that transition from becoming a best-selling author to now a book coach? Okay. So another part of the puzzle. So I had, (laughs) I was just, I had my, 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 uh, I wrote my book with a coach, but the coach was a business coach as well. So very similar to what we do, but I didn't have a business. Mm. I didn't, I wasn't trying to do anything. I just wanted to write a book and share my story. And I started listening because I paid all this money. I mean, a lot of money. I can't even explain and I'm like, well, I just have to keep going with this, right? So I'm going to go to every class and I'm going to listen about landing pages and lead magnet and this and that and all the lingo. This is back in 2018. Uh-huh. So before people were really doing it online this intensely, I was learning all of the language, all of these. And it was German to me. Like, <laughs> honestly, I was like, what in the world are they talking about? Like, what is that? What is a lead magnet? Somebody yes. I did not get it. Did not get it. But I kept on and, and I saved all the worksheets and I saved everything. I saved everything. I said, I know that this is going to serve me. And again, I'm on the train. I got to keep going. I have payments to make. I'm doing it. Promoting the book. And I thought, okay, how can I do create a workshop? I wanted to create a workshop, something live, something like that. So I took some of the ingredients because now I, I have to make money because I've changed my life, gave up my business, um, jewelry business. I got up and left Jamaica and went to Los Angeles all by myself at the age of 50. Didn't want to know anybody. I wanted to drop all that I had learned living in this country where you, know, you pick up mannerisms, behaviors, everything, attitude, the way you drive, like everything. So I said, I wanted to shed a lot. So I'm going to go far, far away. And so I had a big investment. So I said, okay, no, 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 no. I need to do something with this now. So I created this workshop with a lot of the elements that I learned from the book writing. I created a workshop 
And I said, who, how do I create? How do I, who do I connect with? And I just, again, went back to my coach. She's like, how do you see yourself? Where do you see yourself? And I said, I see myself in a community of people, like-minded people, um, maybe Costa Rica, something like that. Literally in my mind, I had no way of getting there. I knew none, but no one there. And again, the community of the Tomorrow Today community who were doing live work, um, festivals did it online and, and I met them. I knew about them. They were going to Costa Rica for New Year's. And I said, I'm going. I'm going to go to Costa Rica. I'm going to go on this work, meet these people, festival. And I did that. And I connected myself with them and I did my workshops and I did a workshop here in Fort Lauderdale and it was, I think people were loving it. And I'm like, wow, basically opening their writing channel, giving them that little bit of, you know, the, the light that I experienced when I wrote my book of, of going through this process, making this list, creating the, you know, coming up with these words and writing something. And everyone loved it but it was just a workshop and I wanted to do more. I wanted to create more. I said, okay, no lie. Someone said to me, I want to write a book. Will you help me? I said, of course, let's do it. I started helping them. And that's how I developed my own writing book. It was just amazing. It's just, again, another piece of the puzzle. Yes. And then someone said to me, listen, there is this coach that I know. And she's amazing. My business was already growing. I was feeling confident. I was helping some people write their book or screenplays, simple little things. Wasn't charging much. I had my workshop, but she's like, you have to meet this woman, Vanessa Ferraro. She's amazing. I'm like, but I don't need to spend. I've spent all the money. I had all the things. Like, honestly, she would not give up. Stacey, I'll never forget. You have to meet her. You have to. I'm like, fine, just give me the number. I'll call her. I call her. I hire her. She's my personal business coach. Uh, We're working on my landing page, on my website, all the things that I've learned. And all of a sudden, COVID hit. And it was like, now what are we going to do? We have to pivot. We have to recreate. We have to do something. I had to do something. We all had to do something. She took all her clients and put them all in a container. And we started developing our many programs. And I said, okay, now I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to help entrepreneurs write their ebook. Because with an ebook, you can connect with your ideal readers, your sole clients, share what you do, show that you're an authority, tell a little bit about your story, put it on your landing page, because everybody had to now really step into it. We couldn't play anymore. When COVID hit, we had to say, all right, what am I doing? I'm sitting in here. I've been playing with this idea. Now I got to really do it. Mm-hmm. And that's what I said. Okay, no, I'm going to help. How can I serve? That's where I went immediately. How can I serve? Mm-hmm. What do I have that I could use to help others? So again, all my little ingredients, I started to pull and said, okay, this is what we're going to do. And I was working with it. Vanessa was helping me. And it just started to grow. And then Vanessa said to me, I want to start a publishing house. I want to do it with you. And I was like, I'm in. She goes, we're going to wait one year. Okay. I'm not ready yet. I have a lot to do. But in one year. And one year to the date. One year to the date. She called me. She was, are you ready? I said, I'm ready. This was March of 2001. I'm ready. All right. Let's call in our authors. Let's do this. And since there, we've published three multi-author books, bestsellers, and um, on my third solo author book, mm-hmm. also going bestseller. And it's just, it's how it all evolved. It's yes. Oh my gosh. That's amazing. Yeah. I was so curious. I, that was one of my other questions because so Vanessa Ferraro was on episode 82. I had her on talking about like entrepreneurship and money wounds. And that that's a big part of her platform, the wealthy goddess movement. And so, excuse me. Yeah. Like I was so curious how the publishing company soulfully aligned came 
to be, how that was birthed. So thank you for sharing that. Oh my God. That's absolutely incredible. And isn't that funny how the universe just like gives us exactly what is next almost when we're not looking for it. Absolutely. Right. Like just absolutely. Bloop. You're like, Oh, that happened to me this morning. I was in meditation. All of a sudden it's like all these things. I was like, thank you. And then the clarity is there and you're like, okay, I can take a sure footed step in an inspired action because I know where I'm going. Amazing. Exactly. Exactly. And it was, it's, and things that I just wanted, like, no, we had a meeting today with the whole team about, you know, our next book and how we're growing. And I remember saying, it just, what, the, what do you want? Like, be clear with what you want. You have to be clear with what you want. And I said, I want to really touch as many people as possible. I don't only want to help people write their books. I don't only want to help entrepreneurs write their books. I want to hold the space for them so that they are empowered to write their books, to share their story, to share their authority and why they're the ones that people want to help them through their journey. Like I wanted that to be clear and I didn't want, there were so many things about my book writing process that I knew could have helped me. Mm-hmm. And those things are the ones that I implemented because that's what I wanted. And then with Vanessa in the mix, well, it's the healing with the clarifying, with the, you know, the clear next steps in the business is, is what makes it so magical. So Line Publishing is that it really, holds you it doesn't leave you like they left me it's like oh you have your manuscript now now for an extra x amount of money you too could have your business and publish your book it was like what do you mean Mm -hmm. so I wanted to make sure that it was leaving you completely empowered that I didn't leave or we don't leave our authors without a plan and fully empowered yes Yes. And there is a plan and it's very thought out. It's very clear. I mean, every step of the way you were there for us, but then what also happens because so far the books that you, that I have seen through soulfully aligned publishing are multi multi author books, having gone through that experience, it's for, I can, I'm going to just speak for wounds to wisdom. It was a sisterhood. I mean, we would come together in our, we had, you know, two, twice weekly meetings and we would come together and we would just pick up where we left off. And it was like, there were no barriers up. There were no guards. We were just open hearted, sincere, bouncing ideas, getting advice, sharing, holding space, listen, the listening, being Mm -hmm. heard that just from you as a coach, but from everybody that was involved, it was pure magic. I mean, yeah. So talk about a a beautiful process. Thank you. Thank you. And yes, I love the, 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 the aspect of the community because everybody's in the same place, Mm -hmm. right? And you're going through the process together and everybody has different questions. And when someone comes up with a question, then that someone might be too shy to ask. It's like, oh, thank God, somebody else asked. Yeah, yeah me too. I'm feeling that too. Yeah. And so you have that, because writing, writing, whether it be a book or a chapter, when you're sharing a story in a way that is purposeful and it is, you know, not only because you want to share the story, but you want to connect with your, at the end of the day, we all, yes, want to serve, but we also want to fund our movement, right? We still need you know, that right ingredient to make sure that we are, we're touching and and being heard by those who need us and those we want to serve. And, and we want to do that in a holistic and and wholesome way um, and make sure that that comes across clearly. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. You know, amazing. So you alluded to this a a little bit. So it sounds like there's plans for more books. Yes, yes, yes. We are. I'm actually um, leading my Open Your Writing channels on the 2nd of February. I'm super excited because every single time it just gets more and more exciting. Um, I love it. I love the transformation that goes through it. And then, yes, we're about to share um, and open the doors to our next book. Yay! So yeah, super exciting. Oh my gosh, I love it. So exciting. So I- exciting. 
think just based on some of the things that I've been seeing, I have an idea what this book is about. So I'm anxious for that to be revealed. So where can our listeners find and connect with you? Well, you can go to, we just started our Soulfully Aligned Inc. social media. So we're just kind of populating and getting ready. But Sandra Rodriguez Bicknell is my Instagram page. Um, you can go there, you'll able to, you know, get a, a one-on-one call with me, you'll learn more about me. Uh, we have soulfullylinepublishing.com is our website. And yeah, send me a DM, connect with me, I'm available to chat, I'm not sending anybody else um, to talk to you. But yeah, if, if you have any questions, Sandra Rodriguez Bicknell is a place to go. Awesome. Perfect. I will add that social link as well as the soulfullyaligned.com website link in the show notes. And the final thing that I love to ask all of my guests, are you living your rich, authentically aligned, wholesome life? I am. I am. I really am. I know that there are other aspects of the life of life that will grow and come um, as it always does. But I can truly say that I am, I am sharing what I'd like to share. I'm living where I'd like to live after moving around so much. Um, And I'm, and I'm comfortable in my skin about it. Amazing. Well said. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm so just so excited and happy and joyful that you agreed to be on the show. Thank you for coming on. It means a lot. You really carried me through a very important healing process that I didn't realize that that was what was needy. Like I didn't realize that's what I needed. Right. And then it wasn't until I decided this is what my chapter is going to be about that. I recognized there was still more healing and it really took me about four or five times to read my chapter out loud before I didn't cry. So then it was Uh, like, you know, you know, then at that point, you're like, okay, it's complete. Like it's time. I thanked it, released it. It's time to move on from this very empowered state. So, so amazing. Such a beautiful process. If you are interested in writing your book or becoming an author, but you don't, you're not quite sure, like what would my whole book be about? The multi-author book is a great introduction to get you started. Like I'm already like, since actually while we were like at the end, so during launch, I was like, okay, next book. Hmm. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Because you don't know, you don't know when you get in there, you don't know what treasure you're going to unlock. Exactly. Yes. Amazing. So I highly recommend you reaching out. Uh, to either Sandra herself or Soulfully Aligned and asking all of your questions and just connecting. They're amazing women, powerhouses for sure. And I'm just so honored and blessed to have them in my life. Thank you. Oh my gosh, Rachel. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It is an honor to be on your podcast. It is an honor to have you in my life. It is an honor to have worked with you. Truly. I remember when you came to the first interview and I remember I zoned in on you. I'm like, this woman, there is something very, 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 very powerful, but there was a connection that it was like when we had our first meeting, I'm like, yes, yes. I love her. Oh, so thank I love you. That means so thank much. Thank you. I appreciate it. We have thank a beautiful you. day and yes. thank you again. You as well. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, listeners. And thank you, Rachel. Heal yourself, heal the world. Thank you so much for tuning in today. If you are listening on YouTube or any other podcast platform, I greatly appreciate your support. If something in this episode resonated with you, please like and subscribe to the Live Your Raw Life channel or podcast and leave a review while you're there. Your time, energy, and support is greatly appreciated. Sending light, love, and positive energy your way. We'll see you next week.